Abraham and opium. Abraham from the Bible. Abraham and opium. Opium is the juice of poppy. Abraham is the poppy of the juice. <laughs> it's an old Jim Downing joke. If you, uh, you know Jim. Um, so I just want to get up here and share with y'all tonight uh, just some of the takeaways that I've had from my time here at Fort Lewis. Um, some of the lessons learned over the past uh, four plus years that I've been here. Uh, I do have some verses, so if I can go ahead and get those knocked out, get some volunteers. John 15, uh, verses 14 and 15. Zach, thanks. Uh, Psalm 119, or Psalm 139, 23 and 24. Carrie, thanks. Somebody's got First Thess quoted, or, yep, thanks, Sarah. Uh, Mark 6, verses 6 through 13. Andrew, thank you. And then, uh, just because there's like eight verses there, I'm going to give somebody else the next three. Mark 6, 30 through 32. Michael, thank you. And then finally, uh, Colossians 3, 23 and 24. Oh, Jess? Dalton? Dalton's got it. Cool. Thanks, guys. Um, so the three things that I want to speak on tonight um, are just my experiences from, uh, from Fort Lewis. <laughs> Uh, three areas that I felt like God has really helped me develop. Uh, the first being a personal relationship with Jesus. The second is uh, sharing life in community. And then the third, laboring in the kingdom. Um, and I just want to preface this uh, message with these are my experiences and this is what uh, God has worked in my life doing. But I highly encourage you to take what I'm getting, going to share tonight and go back to the scriptures. Be like the Bereans in Acts 17.11, uh, examining the scriptures every day to see if what I'm telling you up here is true or not. Um, go back and figure it out for yourselves. But this has just been my experience over the past four plus years. Um, so the first one, personal relationship with Jesus. Uh, if somebody could go ahead and read the John 15. <clears throat> you are my friends if you do what I command you. No longer do I call you slaves, for the slave does not know what his master is doing, but I have called you friends. For all things that I have heard from my Father, I have made known to you. Thanks, Zach. It's actually very fitting uh, that Zach shared that, and I'll share uh, that Zach read that, and I'll share that why it's fitting here in a second. But um, so I grew up uh, in the South, if you can't tell, uh, in the Bible Belt, and it was not, if you went to church, it's where did you go to church at, and, uh, and where you went to eat after church, that was also important. Uh, and I thought that I had a deep relationship with Jesus, I thought that I was a friend of Jesus, but um, as I got around, as I, whenever I came up here to Fort Lewis, I started seeing things that, uh, things in my life that were not lining up with other people's lives. Um, and if you think about a friend, a friend is somebody that you know well, you spend time with them, and you know what they like and don't like. I did not spend much time with Jesus. I did not know his commands or his word very well, so I didn't know what he liked and didn't like. Um, and so that really started to convict me after a while, after I uh, saw other people that were friends of Jesus. And uh, I think the reason why it's sort of ironic that Zach read that verse is Zach uh, and Hayden Meredith were two of the first guys that ever that I that I ever met, and I was intentionally looking for uh, people who were friends of Jesus. And I really saw their relationship with Christ whenever uh, Hayden invited me over to y'all's house for like blueberry pancakes one morning. I don't know where you were at, but, uh, and then Zach and I had got lunch and, uh, lunch and dinner many times after that as well. And one of the things that really stood out about the conversations that I had with them or whenever I was at their house is they were talking about Jesus a lot and they were talking about what they had gotten from the word or what God was teaching them from their time in the word. And these were all new concepts to me because I just thought that, you know, going to church and being a good person, that's what life was about. And then um, I didn't really have the relationship part in my life at all. Um, but thankfully, uh, Hayden saw that I had that need in my life, and uh, Hayden really helped me develop a personal relationship with Jesus by teaching me how to get in the Word for myself on a daily basis. And I am so thankful that he did. Uh, that was a little over four years ago, and thankfully I'm still growing in that personal relationship with Christ. Um, 
And another thing on the same lines as being in the Word, uh, uh, somebody can read Psalm 139, verses 23 and 24. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxious thoughts. And see if there be any hurtful way in me, and lead me in the everlasting way. Yeah, so I had never... uh, I had never asked God to examine my life like that. Normally, whenever I talked with God, whenever I prayed, it was, God, I'm sucking right now. I need you to help me through this. Um, Or, I want this thing really bad. Please give it to me. Um, It was a very, very selfish, uh, I don't even know if you would call it a relationship. It was a very selfish agreement that I thought that I had with God and what I thought that looked like. I never asked God to examine my heart and change my heart and my mind for th- for it to become more like Him. I never asked God to take what I was getting out of the Word. It took me a long time to put those dots together of what I was getting out of the Word should be changing the way that I live and not just extra head knowledge that I have. And uh, so I think uh, some of us may have heard the decision, Lordship decisions tossed around before. That had never crossed my mind of making decisions based on the kingdom for the greater good of the kingdom. Um, but Zach and Hayden really uh, really helped me see what those decisions look like. And I think uh, two prime examples that I'd like to give is um, Zach and Jess. Whenever Zach decided to get out of active duty in the Army and stay here in DuPont, in the DuPont JBLM area, specifically to get more time with Mike and Liz and to learn, um, to learn more about uh, following Jesus from them, um, They chose not to pursue their careers above Jesus. They chose not to go back to Arizona or Texas um, because that was closer to their family. They chose to uh, stay up here and pursue their relationship with Jesus. So I thought that was huge seeing that in their life uh, early on in my walk. And then Hayden, uh, he and his wife, Emily, made a similar decision later on by um, Emily is a PA, and she had they were living in Charleston at the time, and uh, Hayden was not very happy with his job that he had, but they were uh, they were making their, God was using them down in Charleston, and Emily had gotten job offers in Alabama where she's from, Texas where Hayden's from, and in Tennessee where she went to um, PA school, but they decided to stay in Charleston because they felt like um, that's where God was calling them to stay at and they really wanted to rely on Him. So that's definitely going against the grain of what I thought a relationship with Jesus looked like. Um, But I'm so thankful that I've had those experiences and those people setting examples like that in my life. Um, And I ended up making a similar decision uh, towards not placing my career above um, following Jesus probably uh, like a year within the past year about uh, instead of I chose to go to Kansas rather than Italy and um, I know that sounds crazy to a lot of people but it felt like that's where God was calling me to go and then uh, God was like psych you're going to Korea so um, it was cool it's been a cool ride so far on that um, but that has been uh, two things that have definitely uh, impacted my relationship with Jesus, uh, two probably the key things are time in the Word uh, and time in prayer. And so I would like to thank uh, spe- specifically Zach and um, Hayden for helping me early on in that. The second thing that I would like to share uh, that I felt like I've learned here, learned here uh, at JBLM is sharing life within community. So if somebody can go ahead and uh, I think it's Sarah. Uh, read the first Thess verse or quote it. We care for you because we love you so much. We delighted to share with you not only the gospel of God but our lives as well. Yeah, so I'm, I'm going to preface this. If I get a little emotional, please, uh, please give me a little grace in that. This, uh, and the reason I say that is because I was not really following Christ before I got up here, like I said. Um, so when people ask, what are the things that you've learned uh, at Fort Lewis? What are the big takeaways that you have? I um, learned everything up here. Um, my relationship with Christ uh, started here, really. Um, so yeah, first this, uh, 2.8. We loved you so much that we delighted not only to share the gospel of God, but our lives as well. Um, the people in this room and some folks that are not here tonight also have really 
not only helped me walk with Jesus, but opened up their lives and their homes. Uh, a few folks in here, I've lived with them uh, for most of my time here. And so uh, that really, if you if you live with other people or if you, uh, you got roommates or living in a dorm or stuff like that, you know what sharing life with each other looks like. It gets messy, but it's real. Um, and so my first experience of sharing life was uh, at the pad with um, Mark Cross, Michael Tucker, or Tucker as he's known, uh, Brian Trainer, and then Zach. Um, it was a great time. Uh, like I said, lots of people have roommates throughout their life. They live in dorms or in the barracks or a bunch of lieutenants or NCOs that have BAH. They'll get in a house together. Um, but normally those houses, like everybody's sort of doing their own thing. But I had never lived with a group of guys that uh, all were on fire for Jesus and trying to go in the same direction to make an impact on the community. Um, and so that was awesome. We, uh, we were able to do outreach dinners and invite people over to, uh, to see what our lives look like. Um, we were able to wake up in the... Zach was my alarm <laughs> clock for like three months. He would uh, come in and flip the lights on at five and then... 10 or 15 minutes later, I'd roll out of bed, and then we, then we would start reading uh, in the mornings before PT and work, but uh, it was great. We shared life together. Um, we shared our sucky days uh, after work. We would come home and um, vent with each other, and I could never, on any of those days, which it was, it was pretty easy back then because I was getting off at like 2.30 every day, 3 o'clock, um, the easy life, uh, it was really... I could always count on people pointing me back towards Christ in those rough days that I was having um, and just encouraging me through that. And uh, those were some of the best times that I've had living with folks. Um, so that was from August of 14 to August of 15. And then uh, in August of 2015, Mike and Liz uh, invited me to move in with them and their four kids. Uh, yeah, Theo had just been born. So with their four children, uh, at that time, that was the first tour at the Chong House. Um, and if you've never uh, you've never lived around a bunch of kids, it's uh, it's a fun experience. And uh, yeah, that's all I got to say about the kid part. Um, very uh, very good times, and I got really close with their kids. Um, and I enjoyed it, every minute of it. Um, but I had two roommates, uh, two different roommates at my times with at the Chongs. Uh, Brian Trainer, who I lived with at the pad, we moved in with Mike and Liz at the same time. And uh, and we, and then later on, the, my next time at Mike and Liz's house, uh, Andrew was my roommate. And I really, uh, I really just enjoyed my time being sharing that. Twin or uh, that uh, bunk bed with Andrew and Brian. I was uh, I, I grew a lot through that close knit time with each other, and I think we each of us learned how to grow by loving and serving one another, and then receiving love and receiving someone trying to serve us and meet our needs. Um, one of the uh, probably easiest ways that I can think of is uh, Andrew. If you know Andrew, Andrew is a very scheduled person. He likes to know about things well in advance. Not Spontaneous is not a word that I think of whenever I think of you, bud. Um, but Andrew really served me in that way by being willing to like, hey, I gotta go get gas. You gonna go down to Costco with me and we'll get a slice of pizza like right on the spot. That like normally throws him out of whack. But he, uh, he, met, he really served me by being willing to, on that 15-minute ride down, 15-minute ride back, we were able to decompress the day. We were able to talk about the guys that we were meeting with. Hey, how do you think that I can encourage this guy to follow Jesus closer? Or what has been your experience with meeting with guys? So we really developed um, just a great relationship with one another, but Andrew really helped me consider how I could uh, love people better for Jesus. And so I really appreciate you for that. Um, and now to, uh, to Mike and Liz. Um, one of the biggest things I learned uh, with Mike and Liz is uh, what a Christ-centered marriage looks like. 
Um, and I'm, I love my mom and dad. Um, I think they they love my me and my sister, um, Austin. But they, unfortunately, they got divorced whenever I was in the fifth grade. So my view of what marriage looks like is a little bit skewed. And my view of what um, interactions with siblings uh, is supposed to look like, my, my view of what a husband and wife looks like um, is sort of skewed. But Mike and Leah's really brought that into clarity um, for me. Um, just seeing them co-laboring with each other and on mission for Christ um, and considering how each of them could help the people that they were meeting with um, grow closer. For them, uh, I, I was privy to a couple of arguments with Mike and Liz and that, uh, that normally sounds weird of like people, if you're going to argue, you don't argue in front of other people, but I felt honored that they considered me family enough to argue in front of me, and then afterwards they explained what their argument was about and told me like what Christ-centered decision they moved to. Um, that's all I can say about that for right now. Uh, Mike and Liz were by far used by God to develop my relationship with Christ more than anybody else. And um, I just want you two to know and everybody else that um, I will be eternally grateful for y'all's obedience to Christ. Um, I would not be where I'm at today without y'all, so thank you very much. Um, back into sharing life, uh, that, which that was all part of it. Um, I debated whether or not to add this part, but I think that it was a... Uh, a huge part just to the community as a whole. Um, so last uh, October, we had a tragic accident, uh, not accident, a, uh, a tragic crash happened um, with with Brad, uh, Carrie's husband, uh, in Afghanistan. And there was about a week, uh, two weeks of time that we didn't know if Brad was uh, going to make it or not. And, um, and that was probably one of the biggest emotional times uh, that I have ever had for uh, for anybody, for another brother in Christ, um, and for Carrie as well, and, but really just seeing, I think that this community right here, uh, seeing them pull together to, um, to serve and learn, love, gosh, serve and love on Carrie, um, when Brad was still in uh, Afghanistan, then whenever they moved him to launch stool, and then before she could get out to Walter Reed, um, just throughout that whole time, and then people going to visit Brad and Carrie uh, at Walter Reed, that was a huge testament, I think, to what God has done through this community in bringing this close-knit together, close-knit group together. And I, I think, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but Carrie's neighbor, uh, their neighbors across the street, noticed the cars and the food just non-stop rolling in there at their house. And uh, I think they had some back, some religious background, but they they realized that it was different and said that I want what you have. Um, and so I just think that, I can't speak any more on to it, but uh, that I think uh, shows what God has used this community for and how close it is and how much we love one another. And then finally, uh, my last, uh, another experience that I want to share on in sharing life in community is just my time at Sarah and Christian's house uh, over the past two, three months, two, three months. Um, it's been awesome. It's been great to see Christian and Sarah uh, on mission for Christ, just like Mike and Liz uh, were, but just seeing it from a uh, married without kids point of view instead of married with five kids. Uh, it's been different, a lot more time to talk with one another, um, and a uh, lot more time to uh, watch The Office. Um, <laughs> but we've had some great times, and probably the, this may sound silly, but the biggest thing that I've learned from Sarah and Christian is if, uh, if you don't know, they have a bird, and each, uh, the bird, Tucker the bird has been through a lot, I hope you don't mind me sharing this, he's been through a lot, poor little fella. And Christian, Christian's values of Tucker and Sarah's values, they differ. Um, but what I've really seen through their Christian and Sarah's love for each other is 
they value each other's values, even though they don't align. Um, and they are willing to sacrifice. They are willing to uh, suck it up whenever you've had a long day or um, whenever you've had an emotional day. And they just pull together and love each other. Um, they're not perfect. They get in arguments too uh, and fight. But it's really cool just to see how um, how they come back towards Christ. And then, thank, again, thankfully, I'm glad that they share that and explain that with me. So I really appreciate that. And I think that's one of the significant things about the Mark 3.14 principle. Uh, Mark 3.14 says, He chose twelve and appointed them apostles that they might be with Him and that He might send them out to preach. Um, that be with principle. Jesus and His twelve men, they were together for around three, three years together, 24-7. Um, a lot of people will tell you that it's about 10,000 hours that they spent together. And so that be with principle. In 10,000 hours, you're going to get down to business. You're going to cover up some things that are uncomfortable to talk about. But uh, I really think that's important to get down to the heart of the issue of how does this help me love God and how does this help me love people. So I really appreciate um, all of you guys from the pad to the Chongs to the Roths um, just sharing your life and the rest of the community sharing your life with me and helping me grow in Christ. And then the last thing that I just wanted to hit on is um, laboring in the community. Uh, if I could have somebody read the Mark 6, 6 through 13 passage. And laboring he, for the kingdom. And he marveled because of their unbelief. And he went about among the villages teaching. And he called the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He charged them to take nothing for their journey except the staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not put on two tunics. And he said to them, Whenever you enter a house, stay there until you depart from there. And if any place will not receive you, and they will not listen to you, when you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed that, that people should repent. And they cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and healed them. Thanks, Andrew. And then whoever had the uh, 30 through 32, you could read that. The apostles gathered together with Jesus, and they reported to him all that they had done and taught. And he said to them, Come away by yourselves to a secure place and rest a while. Thanks, Mike. Yeah, so uh, Jesus is sending out the 12 and um, tells, them what, tells them what they need to do, and then afterwards they do a little AAR. He brings them back, they discuss what happened, and they get some rest. Um, I think one of the key parts is the second part of uh, verse 6, though. Then Jesus went around teaching from village to village. Jesus modeled for the twelve what he wanted them to do before he sent them out to do it. So sort of the see one, do one, teach one type method. Um, I have experienced that through... Um, folks in this community, and that's another thing that I wanted to caveat. These are not linear. One is not, I would say, the, per the relationship with Jesus is the most important thing. But these other two things, they flow into or flow out of this relationship with Jesus. So these are not greater than or a linear type thing that I want to share. Um, but from my relationship and interactions with folks in this community, um, I really saw what modeling laboring for Christ look like. Um, Matt Hill being the first example that I'd like to talk about. Um, man, I've never seen a more faithful guy going out and uh, just witnessing to people and reaching out to people at the PX. Um, cold turkey evangelism is uh, weird and awkward at times, but uh, I think it's important and it's a great skill to learn. And I've accompanied Matt uh, a few times on what that's uh, and gotten that experience of what that looks like. Um, at the PX, and that's what the apostles or the disciples were going out and doing. Jesus told them to go out and tell people, "Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is near." And so, really, just putting it in perspective of what we're, um, what people are going to be facing. So, I appreciate that, Matt, of you just modeling that for me and showing me what um, that aspect of laboring in the kingdom looks like. Another one is man-to-mans. Uh, 
or man to man, if you like that. And those are just terms that we use for getting time with somebody else. Um, Mike really helped me. Um, helped me. I hadn't got this principle down to an art yet, but Mike modeled for me what that looks like by inviting me to a lot of man to man with him, and still do just sitting in on him and seeing what that interaction looks like. Um, and one of the key things that I remember from Mike and I, we met with a, it was my man-to-man -man with a guy named Keegan, and Mike sat in on it, and um, I don't really even remember what we talked about during the uh, during the man-to-man, -man, but afterwards I remember Mike asked me a question, he was like, what do you think he really needs? And I hadn't considered that before. What I, I had like a, my top ten that I was going to share with a guy, and we're going to go through these things, whether you need to hear them this week or not. I didn't really consider what does this guy need to hear in his life right now. He may not need to hear me going on and saying how the Levites gave, or how the tribe of Israel gave 10% to the Levites. He may not need to hear a message on tithing. He may need to hear, like, man, I just need somebody to love me and care about me. Um, and so Mike really helped me consider that uh, of how to care about other people whenever I'm meeting with them. Um, and so I appreciate that, Mike. And then uh, just the last example I wanted to give on laboring for the kingdom was um, what it looks like to labor at work, um, especially whenever you're in a busy job. Busy and a non-busy job. I remember Zach uh, wasn't terribly busy whenever uh, whenever he met Brian Trainer. Um, he was... Brian was shadowing along, so he had time to like show him around everywhere. So I don't think you were like super busy at that time, were you? Um, <laughs> but uh, but just goofing off, yeah, showing him around posts and what engineer officers do or whatever. Um, and so, but Brad, Zach's boldness of just putting the flag out there at the very beginning and saying like, "Hey, man, this is what I'm about. I would love for you to join it." Um, that had a huge impact on Brian's life, Brian Trainer's life, I know, and you know this for a fact. And, um, and Brian, Zach was able to reach out to Brian and get time with him every day in his unit and help him try to follow Christ and point him towards Jesus more. And uh, now Brian's doing great things uh, for the Lord down in med school in San Diego. Um, so that was just one example of what laboring at work looked like. Another example is a guy named Brian Kunihira that some of you may know. Um, Brian was a um, was a first group major. He was a he was the company commander and then S three or backwards. That he was an S three and then a company commander. So he was uh, in fourth battalion over at group. So he was spending. 16 to 18 hours a day at work, I think he said, or Shelly said, that Brian came home for dinner uh, five times out of uh, a year span during the work week. And so um, Brian was pretty, pretty maxed out, and he wasn't able to spend that time to go get that traditional hour, hour and a half lunch. But God really provided for Brian while he was at work because that was something that he was praying for. Um, two guys, uh, Eric Earl and Gordon Winslow, who God brought into their S shop and into their company to, uh, that were hungry and wanting to follow Jesus. And um, God answered that prayer for Brian, and Brian was able to pour into those guys' lives by meeting with them for coffee at Gertie's before going into work and then talking about Jesus the, uh, during the work day. And so I feel like uh, these men were key examples for me to see what laboring for Christ looked like while at work. And I've been very thankful that um, God has uh, used me just uh, minorly at work and at the hospital um, to help reach guys like uh, George and Adam and some of the, my other co-workers. So I'm very thankful for, um, for God working through that. Uh, something that Zach and Brian and uh, some of these other guys, I'm, I'm sure a lot of y'all are laboring at your workplace too. Uh, the verse that comes to mind whenever I think about this is Colossians 3, 23 and 24. Somebody read that. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart, as working for the Lord, not for human masters. Since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward, it is the Lord Christ you are serving. Yeah, so in all of our work, um, it should be pointing back towards Christ and think of it as we're not serving our earthly bosses, our earthly masters, but we're serving Christ through all of it. And I think that's why these men um, had such a big impact on my life 
and I think that's what we should be trying to posture ourselves to do. I know I went a little long, I'm sorry, but these are, uh, I was going to take full advantage of the time that you gave me. <laughs> so uh, these are just the three experiences that I've, uh, three biggest areas that I feel like I've grown in, um, personal relationship with Jesus, sharing life with other believers in the community, and then laboring for the kingdom. Um, but again, I would encourage you, uh, after everything that I've said tonight, to go back and search the scriptures and see if this is how Jesus modeled his life. And if it's not, come talk with me and point me in the right direction. Um, but that's it. Uh, anybody have any questions? <clears throat> All right. Thank you very much.